give you praise. Glory to the Most High. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you for tuning in in the name of Jesus. Even as you tune in, kindly share the live broadcast. Let somebody know that we are live for revival hour this hour in the name of Jesus. Time to uh, interact uh, in the word of God and time of prayer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you are all welcome even as you tune in. Uh, tag a friend, tag a colleague and let them connect and hear the word of God as well. And let somebody uh, uh, be blessed through this in Jesus' name. Let somebody hear the word of God and share the live broadcast in whatever group in which you belong so that we can spread the word of God abroad in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, through the preaching, hallelujah, and the prayer here in this place this evening in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And then uh, we're just going to open in a word of prayer and trusting God that he may have his way. Uh, let the prayer touch the heart of God today. Let his name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let somebody be blessed. Let somebody uh, be encouraged today. Let somebody be touched by the power of God in the name of Jesus, son of the living God. So let's just commit this, our lives at this hour, your lives at this hour, and this ministration into the hand of God in the name of Jesus by opening in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we acknowledge you at this hour. We appreciate you, Father, for allowing us to wake up this day and see this new day in the name of Jesus. Not that the alarm clock woke us up, but we walk up by the grace of God in the name of Jesus. So we appreciate you for allowing us to see this new day, oh God. With strength in our body, we say thank you. With the grace to breathe in and breathe out, we say thank you. Have your way, Spirit of Jesus. Glorify yourself this hour in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Let this ministration bring glory to your name. Touch the lives of somebody here tonight. Touch the lives of your people here today. That your name may be glorified in the name of Jesus. So we hand over, oh God, the life broadcast into your hand. And say glorify yourself, Lord, in the name of Jesus, son of the living God. We pray with thanksgiving in our heart. Amen and amen. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord that God has allowed us to wake up. Not the alarm clock that went off as we woke up. No, we woke up by the grace of God. There are some with the alarm on, but they could not see this new day. But the Lord has allowed us to see this new day. It is another testimony to the name of the living God. And it is another testimony to God to say that he's not done with you. And so you are still alive, breathing in, breathing out. And, and it's to show that indeed God is not done yet with you in the name of Jesus. God is not done with you. God is not done with you in the name of Jesus. Uh, Joel chapter 2 verse 25. If you open your Bible into Joel chapter 2 verse 25 for us to pray in Jesus' name. Joel chapter 2 verse 25. The Bible says, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which I send among you. Verse 26 say, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. My people shall never be put to shame. 
Verse 26, the result of restoration is that somebody will eat in plenty and be satisfied and do what? And praise the name of the Lord, your God, my God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame in Jesus' name. Verse, verse 25, in which we want to pray, he say, I will restore to you the years. I want us to pray for restoration. Restoration in the name of Jesus. As on this platform or in church, we have shared on the divine restoration. When God says through prophet Joel, I will restore, it means is a divine restoration. In the natural, in the normal way, when you restore something, it means you are returning it to its original intent. You are returning it to its original place. You are returning the thing in the original form or shape that it was in before. Then you say we have, it has been restored. That from the human perspective, but from the God perspective, when we talk about restoration, it means when God restore, it has to be in a greater quantity than what was lost or taken away initially. Oh, it has to be of a better quality than the initial one. Oh, it has to be of a better kind. That when the Lord restored Job twice as he had before, and it a divine restoration. So it pacified the heart of Job, so that when you think about the initial loss, the pain is completely wiped away. There is no pain in him because God has restored the fortune and the daughters, the latter daughters of Job were more beautiful than the first one. This is, com is of a better kind, hence it's called divine restoration. So when God restores, it has to be of a better quality, in a better kind, of a better quantity, in a better quantity, better quality of a better kind. Divine restoration. If you are hearing it, kindly respond. When God restore, it restore, it restore in a better quantity of a better quality, in a better Kind in the name of Jesus. I am just summarizing when we look at the scripture in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, the pattern of God when the restoration comes. He has to be better than what was lost. He has to be better than what was stolen. It has to be in a better quantity than the initial loss. When you have lost 100,000 render maybe through a wrong deal and then your heart is at pain for the money as gold. But when God Store when you bring a million rand for what you have lost as a hundred thousand rand, your heart is pacified and the pain of the initial loss are completely removed, pacified by the better quantity that has come. I hope it's clear in the name of Jesus. So when God restores, it has to be in a better quantity of a better quality or in a better kind. Even in relationship, when the dude changes mind and dump you, and while you have invested two years, three years of your emotion in this relationship, hoping that it will lead in marriage, but it has just broken forth, and the guy moved on and moved on with another woman, and your heart is at pain, but when God utilizes one of the tools in the kingdom of God calls restoration. When the new dude comes, he has to be of a better kind, uh, in a, of a better quality. When you think about the one that left you, your heart is not at pain. You even say, God, I thank you that the dude left me for this one to come because it has to be in a better quality. He has to be of a better kind uh, so that you do not miss the one that left you. Restoration in relationship. Restoration 
in work, restoration in business, restoration in family, restoration in the church. I want us to pray for restoration, divine restoration that comes in a better quantity, that comes of a better quality, that comes in a better kind. Let the Lord restore, restore your business, restore contract. And maybe other they have closed, they have stopped them because of the pandemic. Let us ask God for restoration in a better quantity of a better quality in business, in your work, in your family. Let restoration manifest in your business. Let restoration come in relationship. May the Lord restore in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for divine restoration in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for divine restoration, divine restoration, Lord, in the lives of your people, divine restoration in the family of your people, divine restoration in the wake of your people, divine restoration in the career of your people, divine restoration in the wake of their hand, divine restoration in their business, restore even of health, Lord, touch somebody's body, let their body be restored to sound the health, divine restoration, divine restoration in the wake of God, divine restoration in the church of God, divine restoration in relationship, let the Lord restore divine restoration, divine restoration, Lord, upon your people, may the Lord restore in the name of Jesus. He will need to pray. He will need to push in this prayer. We are praying. You are praying for yourself and praying for the people online. We are also interceding for others. We are appealing to God according to Joel 2.25 that the Lord restore. According to Jeremiah, the Lord restore health. He restore health. According to Exodus, may he restore in better quantity what you have lost. I may begin to declare let restoration, my Manifest in my life. Let the Lord restore in the name of Jesus. I want you to follow after me and make this declaration in the realm of the spirit. Make a, open up your mouth and begin to declare, my father, my God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for restoration in my life. In the name of Jesus, my father, my God, I pray for restoration. In my life, in the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, I pray for restoration in my work, in the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, I pray for restoration in my business, in the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, I pray for restoration of health in my body, in the name of Jesus. One more time, my Father, my God, I pray for restoration of health in my body in the name of Jesus my father my God I pray for restoration in relationship in the name of Jesus my father my God I pray for restoration in my family in the name of Jesus my father my God I pray for restoration in my local church in the name of Jesus my father my God God, I pray for restoration in the body of Christ, in our nation, in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray where you are and make this prayer your own and pray for the people of God as well. Father, we are praying for divine restoration. May you restore somebody work. May you restore somebody in business. May you restore somebody in career. May you touch the body of somebody. Let them receive a health divine Divine health, let their body be divinely restored to sound the health in the name of Jesus. Anything in the body that is not in line with the word of God, we command it to go now. We command it to depart now. Let the health 
overcome by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Soundness of health into somebody's body, into somebody's blood system, into somebody's organ, into somebody's bones in your lungs. May you receive a health, restoration of health by the power in the name of Jesus. The Lord restore, the Lord restore your work. The Lord restore business opportunity. The Lord restore contract. Let contract come now in a better quantity, of a better quality, in a better kind, contract in your business. Let the Lord restore, restore mighty God. I pray for every life here today. May there be restoration, restoration in Lucy's life, a restoration in innocent life, a restoration in Nangamso's life, a restoration in Hillary's life. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion around, when the Lord restore the captivity of Zion, Zion around. It was like a dream. So we pray for divine restoration in the life of Hillary. Divine restoration in the name of Jesus. Divine restoration upon DJ's life. May God restore your work. May God restore your business. We pray for divine restoration. Divine restoration upon Bishu's life. Let the Lord restore by the power of God in in the name of Jesus, may the captivity be turned around by the power in the name of Jesus. The Lord restore, 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 let's circle, restore, let's circle, restore your people, Lord. Let the people experience restoration, divine restoration in the life of Tenji, divine restoration by the power of God, restoration, divine restoration in the the name of Jesus. May the Lord restore Joanna. May the Lord restore you. Complete restoration. Restoration of work. Restoration of finances. Restoration in your body, Joanna. Receive divine restoration by the power of God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we are asking you at this hour, may you remember the life of Sunny. Let there be restoration in the life of Sunny in a better quality quantity. Instead of shame, may you bring a double honor in the life of Sunny. Divine restoration. The Lord restore. Divine restoration. Oh Lord. Divine restoration in my life. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Restore into my life in a better quantity, of a better quality, in a better kind, restoration, divine restoration. In the name of Jesus, the Lord restore, even if you have been affected but your work has been affected because of the pandemic, negatively affected. We are asking God to restore. In the name of Jesus, by this prayer, restoration in the name of Jesus. That alone may restore in a better quantity, better quality of a better kind than the initial loss, than the initial loss of opportunity, than the initial contract. If contract in your business have been cancer because of what is going on, when we ask God for divine restoration, in other words, when the next contract comes, it has to pacify your heart. It has to be of a better quality, in a better kind in terms of amount, in a, of a better kind in, in the, compared to the initial one, so that your heart is pacified. Hence, we talk about Divine restoration. Divine restoration. He says to Jeremiah, I will restore health. So when the body is sick, we are praying for divine health. Restoration of health. So that the body goes back into the state that God intended it to be with no issue. In addition, it has to be in a better position strength-wise, mentally, in your blood, in all your organs, so that when you think about then when you were before sickness to now, your, your heart is completely pacified in the name 
of Jesus. Divine restoration. Divine restoration. Divine restoration in the name of Jesus. From our God. Hallelujah. Divine restoration upon your life. Narupe in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be still here. Let's just quickly share the word of God and then go back into prayer. You have to stay tuned throughout. So anytime we will connect back again into prayer in the name of Jesus. Oh, may the Lord restore me as well. Divine restoration in my life in this season in the name of Jesus. Restoration. Restoration. And it's not a restoration from human perspective. Hence, we call divine restoration. It has to be in a better quantity, of a better quality, in a better kind than the initial loss, than the initial miss opportunity, than initial whatever was taken away before. When God restore, your heart has to be pacified. Hence, when He bring it, He's in a better quantity, of a better quality, in a better kind. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We stay. Let's see how, uh, where we conclude. We started yesterday on the category of intercession. Intercession. We have brought intercession through this month of July. Trusting God that we are equipped. We are reminded. And we are utilizing this in our lives. For daily victory. In the name of Jesus. In the area of intercession. God at all time desire men and women to stand in the gap and appeal, and appeal before him and on behalf of their family, on behalf of their church, on behalf of their organization, on behalf of other people, on behalf of the city, on behalf of the nation, on behalf of the body of Christ. Appeal raising prayers to God on behalf of others and intercepting the devices of the wicked from having Having influence over other people as so we stand in the gap and intercept through warfare prayer in the name of Jesus. As we say, the only language the devil understands, it has to be violence and the violence is a spiritual violence through prayer, intercessory prayer in the name of Jesus. Warfare type prayer. And you see, sometimes you, I don't know if you have mentioned it already before, but we're going to mention it again. There are times where you have just the urge of prayer. You just feel the sense to pray. You just feel the sense to intercede. And at first not understanding why. What you need to know is that the Holy Ghost who is everywhere at all time in his fullness is moving and looking for men and women who will call operate with him and, um, and raise intercessory prayer before the throne of God or raise prayer that will intercept the activity of the enemy because he knows the next day or the other day there is something that will happen there or there is something that is about to happen that is a danger to that family to that individual to that world so he is looking for somebody who will collaborate with him by intercession to intercept what the enemy is trying to do to block the devices of the enemy. That's why when you have interceded and you know you are praying while you are in, in prayer, all of a sudden you feel as if the burden now was lifted. But the next day you realize, oh, there was an accident here. It was a, a, a fatal accident but somehow God preserved those lives. The enemy intended to finish and kill them but God preserved. People came out again sound and safe. And you wonder what was happening, then when you go back, it is the urge of the Holy Ghost over your life to raise intercessory prayer in order to intercept and block the agenda of darkness that wanted to kill and finish these people in the name of Jesus. But thank God you responded to that and their things have changed. Hence he moves and in looking for men and women across the land, across the city in the family who will make petition before him who will intercept activity of darkness in the name of Jesus. We look yesterday 
on the prayer with the intercessory prayer as a priest uh, representing people before God. It can be general and God can move upon you in a general way just to, to make, to pray for others, to take their prayer request and present that before God. It's like you are moving just in a general way but yet effective. And when we are sharing this category, is not to put people in boxes uh, but is to reveal that at one season or another God may move in your life in this way. Now through this teaching then you are in power. You know when I'm just receiving requests uh, God wants to me to play my priestly role to approach his throne to begin to pray for other people as I am I may, making intercession as a priest. Uh, there are other stages where God will reveal things to you. Positive things uh, in dreams through prophecy, through dreams, through the word of God concerning other people's life. Those things is not for your own entertainment, but is a message from God to take you into prayer so that you both that thing into the physical through your prayers and intercession, through your prayers and travail. When God revealed this is what I'm about to do for that house and is a positive thing, you need to know God is a appealing to you to go into your closet by prayer and intercession to both that thing into the physical in the name of Jesus, son of the living God. And now you are prophetically interceding. You are both into the physical. What God has said. We dealt with those two yesterday. Let by God grace and the time we have before going into prayer. Let touch on this other two. If you have your Bible, Isaiah 62 verse 6 and 7. Isaiah 62 verse 6 and verse 7. Hallelujah. The Bible read. I have said, this is God speaking through his prophet Isaiah. I have set watchmen on your halls, O Jerusalem. They shall not hold their peace. Day or night, you make mention of the Lord. Do not keep silent. Verse 7. And give him no rest till he establishes and till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. <laughs> Verse 6 he say, I have set watchmen on your walls. What is the purpose of watchmen? Watchmen are there to guard. Watchmen are there like security guard. They are guiding the area in this instant and regarding the city of Jerusalem around the walls of Jerusalem. So God is utilizing that language because the people will understand what is the duty of watchmen. So he has set those people to guard, to protect, to properly age around the city but as watchmen over that place. Now, there are times where God will move upon your life, revealing the agenda of darkness that need to be stopped because you are there to protect. You are there to save life. You are there to age. So, and there are times where intercessory prayer may move you into as a watchman. Watchman intercession. Watchman intercessory prayer. So number three, we're talking about watchman intercession. Watchman intercessory prayer. It is a prayer that, that age and God and protect individual families, churches, the region, the city. So if there are people at one stage or the other. God may bring a revelation of something as a danger that is about to come. So he's impressing within your heart so that you may raise a prayer, intercessory prayer that build a age around the city, around your family, around the church as a way of protecting them. But you are building that age through prayer and intercession in the name of Jesus. 
So he say, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You will make mention of the Lord. Do not keep silent. Why? Because he, and give him no rest. Why? Because the intention of God, there is a particular purpose he wants to establish but the devil may want to interfere with that. As God wants to collaborate with men and women that he has set as watchmen so that they may raise intercessory prayer to build a age around that city, around that family as a way of protection, of keeping God through their intercessory prayer in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I hear you. Hallelujah. So a watchman intercessor or watchman type intercessory prayer is a prayer where you are raising prayer to guard a city, to guard a family, to protect in the name of Jesus. When God reveals a danger, it's for you to go into prayer and intercept it. That's why we say intercessory prayer include to intercept the activity of darkness. So as a watchman, as a security guard, spiritual security guard around your wall, around your destiny, around your agenda, around your business, around the city, around the church. God may reveal an impending danger in, in a, 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 an attack that is about to occur. So you raise an intercessory prayer to intercept that thing from making its way into the physical realm in the name of Jesus. And you do that through as a watchman as a security guard, as a protector, as a person who build an age to protect the child, to protect the family through intercessory prayer. I hope it's clear. Watchman intercession is like security guard. You are protecting others through your prayer. You are building fortified walls of protection. You are around the family, around the church, around the leaders through your prayer. You are protecting destiny. You, you, they, 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 because they, as an intercessor, as a watchman, you see things from afar. Through you see things from the realm of the spirit. That that were in the natural, in the Old Testament, the watchmen will be on the, on the tower up there so that they could see from afar. Now you, through your prayer, God is bringing revelation of what is about to happen from afar so that you may respond adequately through prayer prayer and intercession to intercept and block what is about to happen. So watchmen intercessor, they through their prayer, they build a war around individual, around family, around church, around the city, in, through intercessory prayer. They prevent upcoming attacks. They prevent an, an impending danger. They prevent arrows of darkness from fulfilling their, their evil purpose. They stop the agenda of darkness through intercessory prayer. And so you are like a security guard. Now through your prayer in your daily life, your prayer is for you to be able to pick up activity in the realm of the spirit. The activity that you pick up that are contrary to the word of God, it means you have to step in the gap and block those activities from taking place in the name of Jesus. And we do that by intercessory prayer as a watchman. Somebody you are hearing me. Yesterday we talked about prophetic intercession. Now here we are starting with watchman intercession or an intercessory prayer being made as a watchman. Now what is the difference? Be because as a, as a prophetic intercessor or somebody who is prophetically interceding, your agenda is to both in the physical what God intends to happen in people's life in the church. But as a watchman intercessor, you are preserving and protecting destiny. The, what, the prophetic intercessor both destiny, the watchman intercessor protect 
destiny. And there are watchmen around the war. Jerusalem, around the church, around the city. They are protecting the city from the agenda of darkness. While prophetic intercession is bothing the plan of God, is bothing destiny, is bothing the will of God into the city, into the church, into your family in the name of Jesus. That what is the difference. Now I am saying this to say when you have an urge and revelation that is positive, it means God is asking you to go into your prophetic office and begin to both that thing to come to pass. When it's a danger, God is wanting you to, uh, to occupy the place of a watchman so that you may intercept and block that agenda and protect this destiny through your prayer and intercession. I hope it's clear in the name of Jesus, son of the living God. Because we know that the devil is up to nothing good. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The agenda of the devil is to see who to devour, is to kill, to steal, and and destroy John 10 10. But as an intercessor, as a person of prayer, you pick up the agenda and the activity of the enemy through prayer. That way, when we read the Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Continue earnestly in prayer and being vigilant in it. So you become vigilant spiritually through prayer. And when you pick up something raw, you have to intercept and block it from manifesting through your intercessory prayer as a watchman on the wall, as a watchman around the city, as a watchman on your family. You are watching. You are picking up activity. You say, this is wrong. Look, the impending danger, the impending attack. By the power of God, we block it. This agenda of darkness that has been revealed in dreams, that the enemy want to, want to abort that destiny, want to abort that work, want to cause this thing to fall at the age of breakthrough. So through my prayer is how to stop that so that the contract can. We, it will not be aborted. And when you do that and you fight that through intercessory prayer as a watchman and a blocker, any agenda of darkness wanting to kill this opportunity at the age of breakthrough, let it be defeated by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Somebody, are you hearing? Hallelujah. That is a watchman intercessor. And number four, so that we can go into prayer. Number one is priestly intercession or a priestly intercessor. Number two is a prophetic intercession or a prophetic intercessor who is birthing destiny. Number four. Three is watchman intercessor or an intercession that is made to build and protect destiny. And lastly, number four for today, it is called prayer warrior. Prayer warrior. Prayer warrior. It means you are involved in warfare. Remember we say intercession is prayer and warfare on behalf of. So when you are involved in warfare, intense warfare, there are times where God grace you in a particular way to operate, to be militant in your walk with God. In your prayer, you are so militant. You need to know God as empower you to be able to fight as a warrior. So a prayer warrior or an intercessor that is involved as a prayer warrior is a those that God gives you strategy and tactics to fight the intention of darkness uh, so that the breakthroughs are released. I'm going to say, when you are now as a warrior, we, as a militant, it means God has given you strategy and tactics that you need to implement in order to overthrow powers of darkness and release a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible say, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we, are, we do wrestle. We wrestle against 
principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness. It means we are fighting. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Now when we are fighting, there are times where the, the, the grace to be militant is unusual. You need to know in that season God has empowered you with strategy, with the, with the grace to be able to, uh, to fight uh, forcefully the enemy so that a breakthrough that are being hindered I release in the name of Jesus. That is a prayer warrior. He means God has given you strategy and show you that indeed the reason that there are issues in your family in terms of marriage is because of the following pattern. God may bring that revelation to you and, and in a dream, in a vision, in or through prophecy and all of a sudden and give you the urge, the militancy grace upon you is to empower you to be able to fight what he has revealed that has been causing marital failure in the family so that that thing is broken and godly marriages are released in the name of Jesus son of the living God. There are times where you apply for, for a tender and everything looks like it's you will get it but at the last minute it fell flat as somebody else get it you are hurt and again you try again you it's the same you try again when you realize there is that pattern now through your seeking prayer before God God what is going on I want to understand what is the mystery that is causing this contractor to fall flat just at the age of breakthrough and God may reveal Reveal to you that thing. When you reveal, it means now you are in power for war. You have to fight and defeat uh, the agenda of darkness so that the breakthrough are released. Uh, so that the contract when they get to the age of breakthrough, yeah, they are signed off and sealed and you start working because you have defeated that uh, the plan of darkness through the militancy grace God has given you as a prayer warrior. A prayer warrior, you are ready to fight. Uh, you are always at ready for battle. When you receive intelligence from God, revelation from God of what is trying to block, what is frustrating my family, what is frustrating my work, God has revealed what is frustrating that person. When God reveals, it takes you into prayer and is a warfare type prayer and say, Lord, this shall not continue. I break it down by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Now, as a warrior, as a warrior, you have instrument and and weapons available at your disposal. That's why you call for the fire of God, the thunder of God, the earthquake of the Lord to open up and swallow this marching army that is coming to come and steal from us in the name of Jesus through prayer warrior intercessory prayers. You are fighting. The, you have the militancy grace. God has empowered you to be able to fight and resist so that breakthrough are released. When there is a pattern of attacking the dream that are happening, you are wondering, God, what is going on? Why this thing? Every time I'm about to sign a contract, I have this particular dream. And things fall apart. And again, I'm about to sign this contract. Thing that I have again, this dream. It may not be exactly the same, but it's got the same message. And these things fall flat. What is going on? God reveal no, there is a door that the enemy is using and through that dream. Now, when you are in power like that, you stand now as a warrior to fight and destroy the attack of the enemy. You call for the fire of God to destroy the attack of the enemy that God is revealing through dreams. The, the sexual dreams that are happening, Lord, to steal away from me. I pray, may the fire of God destroy the agenda of darkness. What is happening to me when I'm about to experience breakthrough all of a sudden? I see myself in my previous lifestyle in my previous home where I live. I see myself in those years when I was a young child. What is that 
type of foundational power that is pulling me backward. When you have that revelation in three, then you know there is something that is pulling you back, resisting your breakthrough, resisting your moving forward. So as a warrior, you need to stand and say in the name of Jesus, any foundational power pulling me back, let it be defeated by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Any marching army pulling me back, let the earthquake of the Lord open up and swallow the attack of the enemy, the marching army of darkness. Let the earthquake of the Lord open up and swallow any woman, any man appearing in my dream for intimacy. I use the sword of the Lord to cut them out in the name of you have to fight so that the breakthrough are released. <laughs> Prayer warriors are empowered by God with strategy against the work of darkness over individual, over their work, over their career, over their family, over the church. And a strategy that bring and release breakthrough. When there is resistance in terms of breakthrough, we seek God's mind. And when we have a revelation of what is attacking and blocking this, now we are fighting. Spiritually fighting to defeat what is there in the name of Jesus? Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pro, uh, prayer warrior. They are militant. They are ready to fight. Because what? You are a soldier and you have to fight. I'm going to read the scripture here to take us into prayer. In the name of Jesus. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 13 and 14. Nehemiah chapter 4. Verse 40. When things are happening in a particular pattern in your family or in your own life, in a way you don't understand, you need to know it is a spiritual mystery. There is a hidden spiritual hand behind that because things don't just happen. Things don't just happen. There is a hidden hand behind it causing the things to happen in a particular pattern. So as a child of God, you need to be aware and be able to be equipped by God, utilizing weapons, stand in the gap and fight so that that thing is defeated for the breakthrough to be released in the name of Jesus. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 13 and 14. It read as follows. Therefore, I positioned men beyond the lower part of the wall and at the openings. And I set the people according to their families. With what? With their sword, their spears, and their bows. To do what? To fight. Remember we have said before, in the Old Testament, the battle is physical. In the New Testament, the battle is spiritual. They utilize physical weapons. We are utilizing spiritual weapons. They utilize physical strategy. We are utilizing spiritual strategy. We learn what they do physically. We apply that thing spiritually in the name of Jesus. So when they have the sword, the spear is for to do what? To fight because it's a war. You also, you know, you need to open your spiritual arsenal and pull the name of Jesus and pull the blood of Jesus out and pull the word of God out and pull the fire of God out and pull the thunder of God out and pull the light of God out and pull the, 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 the storm of the law and pull the wheel, wheel wind of the law and pull out the thunder of God equipped so that you may be able to fight. Verse 14. Verse 14 says, And look, and I rose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren. Don't negotiate. Fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. Don't negotiate. You have the spear. You have the, 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 the bows. You have the, 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 the sword. Fight 
and in the New Testament, we have the blood. We have the name of Jesus. We have the fire of God. We have the word of God. We have prayer. We have prayer and fasting. We have persistent prayer. We have intercessory prayer. We have the earthquake of the law. We have the, 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 the thunder of God. We have the flying scroll of the law. We have the storm. We have the arrows of God. We have all of this at our disposal to do what? To fight in the name of Jesus. Because the only language the devil understands his fight in the name of Jesus. So we're going to make prayer here now. According to this scripture, they did it physically. We are doing it spiritually in the name of Jesus. Let the law empower us at this hour to defeat any agenda of darkness against your work, against your family, against your church in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray and follow after me. Oh Lord, oh Lord, by your power, let every agenda of darkness against my family be defeated in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, by your power, let every agenda of darkness against my business be defeated. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, by your power, let every agenda of wickedness against the church be defeated. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, by your power, let every evil altar speaking against our destiny be destroyed by your fire. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, by your power. Every altar speaking against our lives uh, be destroyed by your fire in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, every altar speaking against my family be silenced uh, by your blood in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, any power calling my children, calling my family in the night, may the thunder of God Answer on my behalf in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, any power calling my children, calling my family members in the night for evil purpose. May the thunder of God answer in the name of Jesus. You have to make this prayer. Oh Lord, by your power, any altar from my father's house, from my mother's house, Working against my progress, the progress of my family, the progress of my children. Let those altar catch fire in the name of Jesus. Let those altar catch fire in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare today we are standing and fighting for our brethren, for our sons, for our daughters, for our wives, for our houses, for the local church, for the, oh, the house of God, against any evil arrow, enchantment of darkness, against us, oh God, by the power of God, let those be nullified. May the fire of God descend and destroy evil altar against our lives, uh, evil altar against our family, let them be destroyed in the name of Jesus, son of the living God, by your power, oh God, any activity of darkness uh, against your people, be nullified by the power in the name of Jesus, any activity of darkness uh, against your people, be nullified by the superior blood of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, anybody here tonight uh, that their spirit is being called by evil power in the night. Uh, may the thunder of God uh, answer on their behalf uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, may the earthquake of the Lord uh, open up and swallow any marching army against your people's work, uh, against the local house, uh, against our family. Let the earthquake of the Lord open up and swallow evil pattern, uh, open up and swallow evil army 
enemies of darkness in the name of Jesus. Father, may you strike down any marching army against your people by your air quake, by your earthquake, by your sea quake in the name of Jesus. Any wind of darkness operating against somebody's house or somebody's business, may the wind wind of the Lord swap that away in the name of Jesus. Any wind of darkness blowing against somebody's career, may the will wind of the Lord swap that away in the name of Jesus. By the power of God, Masato Koto Sekete. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give it, Lord, the praise. In the name of Jesus, any evil wind blowing against your business and causing it not to excel, may the will wind of the Lord swap it away. In the name of Jesus, by the power of God, in the name of Jesus. I see it's almost time. But, uh, we are continuing the prayer on Sunday. So on Sunday, please be here. Let us pray and continue this prayer in the name of Jesus. On Sunday, we are meeting in this venue at half past nine for a powerful time in, the, in our church service in the name of Jesus. This Sunday is a casual Sunday. Come in your casual attire, ready to praise the Lord and ready to pray. Warfare type prayer this weekend in the name of Jesus. Things cannot be the same again. We have to apply spiritual force so that the breakthrough are released. So that opening doors are open. So that doors are open in the name of Jesus. Double doors are open. Bars of iron has to be cut asunder and breakthrough release. Your godly benefit release. And we are doing that by prayer. So on Sunday, you, you join us for a half past nine church service as per the address on the screen. Or for you need the location, you send your, a, a message to the number on the screen. We send you a location so that on Sunday, we are here for praise. We are here for prayer. But because things have to change in the name name of Jesus. So we want to see you on Sunday as you join us for our service at half past nine in Jesus' name. Amen. Gate have to open. Bars of iron has to be cut asunder so that breakthrough are released. Opportunity are released. And we are applying force as children of God, empowered by God, utilizing our covenant right. And pray the manifestation of the promises of God in our lives. And any resistance, we are fighting it now. We are fighting it on Sunday. Double doors have to open in the name of Jesus. The gate have to be broken because there are other things that have to break. Other gates do not open. They have to be broken. If you have to break them, it means you have to fight and fight and apply spiritual force for the gate to open in the name of Jesus. That is what's happening here on Sunday. You have to be here on Sunday for intense prayer and a time of a powerful praise. Hence, you come in your casual attire. Don't bring suit. Just come in your casual attire. A jean, sneakers, ready for praise, ready for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Things have to change. Lord, I pray for your people that you may touch their lives. That this teaching may empower them spiritually. May revive somebody's life. May these teachings empower your people, Lord, to stand and live a victorious life here on earth. Preserve them against devices of the enemy that snatch away the seed that is sown into their heart in the name of Jesus. Preserve their lives in this night. In the morning, preserve their life. Preserve their possession in Jesus' name. May your face shine upon them, Lord. Be gracious to an individual. May you lift up your countenance toward them and grant them your peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Double dose. Hallelujah.